Hello students, welcome back to EVS class of standard 5. This is the part 2 video of natural resources. Before moving on to today's session, let us recap the previous session concepts. So in previous session, you have learned about what is mean by a resource and what are the natural resources and how we have to conserve the natural resources. The natural resource means the resources that we get from earth and which supports the life. So, a natural resource is being classified as renewable and non-renewable resource. A renewable resource means that can be used repeatedly where it doesn't get over when we continuously use it. And it has an endless supply that kind of resource is called as renewable resource. For example, if we take air, water, soil and forest, these are the few renewable resources. In today's session, you will be learning about the measures that have been taken by the government to conserve the forest and the more detail about non-renewable resources. Now let's move on to the session. So what do you mean by a non-renewable resource students? The non-renewable resource means the resource which run out on continuous usage. Such kind of a resource is called as non-renewable resource. So for example, coal, petrol, diesel, natural gas. So these are the non-renewable resources. Along with this, you will be also learning about the mineral resources. Now let's move on to the session and get to know about the measures that have been taken by the government in order to protect the forest. So, in the previous session you got to know that forests are the natural habitat of wild animal and bird and also they provide food to the animals and many useful materials to the human beings. But the forests have been distracted because of the Various activities like urbanization, industrialization and construction of dams like that. So, in order to prevent from that, the government has been taking few measures to protect the forest. The government has made an amendment to National Forest Policy in 1988 and it has been taken many steps to nurture and conserve the forest like planting more trees and preserving the wildlife animals like that. The government has been maintaining, conserving the national forest through the forest department. On Bangalore highways, you can see that Sanamau forest. So, such kind of a forest have been preserved and been taken care by the forest department. For example, there are many wildlife sanctuaries and national parks. In Karnataka, there is Bandipur forest, Banargata forest which are being protected by making many laws, felling of trees, smuggling of wood, hunting wild animals are punishable offenses. Village panjayat and local community protect the forest. So the people who live in dense forest also take care of the forest. Some religious beliefs and rituals are also helpful to conserve the forest. For example, Nagabanna of Dakshina Kannada, Devarakadu, located in Kudagu, cutting down of trees is prohibited there. Many moments have taken place against the deforestation when implementation of several mega projects were being proposed. So, there, even though many projects were being proposed, they have been avoiding such kind of things. In order to conserve the forest, they have been kept avoiding those projects. Panduranga Hegde initiated Apico movement to prevent the deforestation in Western Ghats which is rich in diversified wildlife in Karnataka. Environmentalist of Kerala successfully stopped a hydroelectric power scheme which was being proposed by the government in Silent Valley by conducting the Silent Valley movement. There is one more movement which triggered in Bihar for conservation of forest which reached even Charkhand and Odisha to save many forests. That movement is called as Jungle Bacho movement or Save Forest movement. 
சுந்தர்லால் பகுகுனா அப்போஸ்ட் கட்டிங் டவுன் ஆஃப் ட்ரீஸ் பை த வென் ஓன் சிப்கோ மொமெண்ட் இன் ஹிமாலயன் ரீஜியன் அண்ட் தஸ் சேவ்ட் மெனி ஃபாரஸ்ட் நவ் லெட் இஸ் கெட் டு நோ வாட் ஆர் ஆல் த அதர் ஆக்ட்ஸ் தட் ஆர் பீன் டேக்கன் பை த கவர்மெண்ட் டு கன்சர்வ் த ஃபாரஸ்ட் த ஃபாரஸ்ட் கன்சர்வேஷன் ஆக்ட் இன் நைன்டீன் எயிட்டி ஃபோக்கஸஸ் ஆன் த டைவர்ஷன் ஆஃப் த ஃபாரஸ்ட் ஏரியாஸ் ஆஃப் நான் ஃபாரஸ்ட்ரி பர்பஸ் த ஸ்டேட் கவர்மெண்ட்ஸ் ஆக்ட் ஆஸ் த என்ஃபோர்சிங் அத்தாரிட்டி ஃபார் ஆல் ரிக்வஸ்ட் அண்ட் ட்ரிங்கிங் வாட்டர் இரிகேஷன் ப்ராஜெக்ட் அண்ட் எக்ஸெட்ரா திஸ் ஆக்ட் ஆல்சோ ப்ரொவைட் தட் ஃபார் ஆல் ஃபாரஸ்ட் லேண்ட் லாஸ் டு சச் டெவலப்மெண்ட் அண்ட் கம்பன்சேட்ரி அஃபாரஸ்ட்ரேஷன் அண்ட் வைல்ட் லைஃப் கன்சர்வேஷன் ரீஹெபிலேஷன் ஆஃப் ட்ரைபல் கம்யூனிட்டிஸ் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ இன் நைன்டீன் எயிட்டி எயிட் த நேஷ்னல் ஃபாரஸ்ட்ரி to meet the basic needs of the rural and tribal population and that help to improve the forest productivity and improving the efficiency of forest product and minimizing the pressure on existing forest animals are also the renewable resource they enhance their population by reproduction sometimes hunting of wildlife animals leads to the extinction of their race and thereby make them non renewable resources so it is our duty to conserve such kind of resources the forest resource falls within the scope of responsibility of state and central government even though state and central government takes their efforts to conserve the forest it is also our contribution to conserve the forest let's get to know about salamadra Timakka who is known as Virakshamata throughout the country. Salamadra Timakka, a proud daughter of Karnataka and she is known as Virakshamata throughout the country. She is married to Chikaya of Holikal village and she stayed there itself. Later, she started to plant the banyan tree and she started protecting it. considering the trees as her children timaka dedicated her life for them itself hence she is called as salumadra timaka and even the government of karnataka declared a project in her name salumadra timaka na neralu yojana in the budget of 2014 to 2015 hundreds of awards have been conferred for her immense concern towards the nature Here are the few important awards Nadoja award which has been given by Kannada University Hampi Karnataka Rajyotsava award Indra Priyadarshini Vrikshamitra award which has been given by government of India she is a role model for every one of us to conserve the environment her concern towards the environment is remarkable and it should be followed by us Now let's get to know in detail about the non-renewable resources. Non-renewable resources are the resources which have been get exhausted. They have been used for a long period of time. For example, fuel. The fuel are the substance which release heat and energy on burning. We use fuel for many purposes. Fossil fuel are formed by the remains of extinct plant and animals which have been buried under the earth's crust from the underneath of earth only we get fuels the main fossil fuel are petroleum diesel natural gas and coal petroleum petrol diesel kerosene wax etc are the by products of petroleum petroleum is called as the liquid mineral which is formed beneath the earth it is formed by the action of bacteria heat pressure on the dead organism which has been buried under the layers of rocks the by products of petroleum are wax paraffin which have been used in making the candle wood polish ointment dye lipstick chemical fertilizer vaseline jelly etc natural gas the natural gas is found within the petrol wells the compressed natural gas is used as an alternative fuel to petrol and diesel to run the vehicles you have seen the use of 
cooking gas at home. This cooking gas is called as LPG which means liquefied petroleum gas. It is obtained by refilling the petroleum or moist natural gas. Next comes the coal. Million of years ago, the remains of plants and trees that have been buried beneath the earth crust did not decay completely. Due to high temperature and the pressure, they naturally turn into the coal under the layers of rocks. This is used as a fuel in the production of electricity and this source of energy is also used in industries. Let's get to know how coal is actually formed. The energy that we get from coal today comes from the energy that plants absorbed from the sun million of years ago. All living plants store solar energy through a process known as photosynthesis. When the plants die, this energy is usually released as plants decay. Under the conditions favorable to coal formation, the decaying process is being interrupted and preventing the release of stored solar energy. That energy is being logged into the coal. Million of years ago, where the burial of plant materials was being subjected to the high temperature and pressure. This caused physical and chemical changes and the vegetation transformation into the coal. The excessive use of fuel is dangerous to the environment. Nowadays, efforts are being made to use alternative sources of energy like solar energy. Where you see nowadays battery cars are being there in order to protect the environment. Now let's get to know about the mineral resource. Mineral is naturally occurring substance that is usually a solid or inorganic and has a crystal like structure. These are formed as a result of prolonged natural process. They are available along with rocks in the surface of earth. The minerals that are extracted in the form of ore refined in the factories and metals are being separated from them. The mineral resources are the key material basis for the socio-economic development. Minerals are the pure inorganic substance that occurs naturally on the earth's crust. More than 2000 minerals are being identified and most of these are inorganic and which are being formed by the various combination of elements. There are many uses of minerals where it depends upon its deposits. Some of the countries are rich in minerals and the greatest use of the mineral depends upon their properties. For example, aluminium is light, strong and durable. So it has been used in many places like aircraft, shipping and car industries. Other minerals like gold, silver and platinum which are being used in the jewelry industries. The copper is also a mineral which is being used in coin industry, making pipe, wire and etc. The silicon is obtained from quartz. It is used in the computer industry. It is our duty to preserve and conserve all these minerals and resources. The availability of natural resources that fulfill our needs is not uniform everywhere. The quality of available resource is also not the same everywhere. As a result of excessive usage, there is scarcity of such natural resources also. If the same condition persists, some of the natural resources may not be available in future. Hence, it is our duty to use the natural resource moderately and they must be reused if possible. This is all about today's class students. Until we meet in next class, keep learning the lessons that have been taught to you.